This video covers assignment 18.3. Again, we're going to work a couple of scattered problems throughout this assignment, and then you have the rest of class to work on the rest of them. So for number three, the scatter plot shows the monthly high temperatures for Austin, Texas in degrees Fahrenheit over a 12-month period. Which function best models the data from months one to nine? So we don't care about these three sets. Now, what I'm going to do is put this in stat edit. And so one of the reasons we're going to go over this is because this takes a little bit of time to go through um, and to do that problem. But if you want to get it right, we want to be accurate. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and fill in. These lines are going like every other. So I'm filling in every other number that would be in between here to kind of speed this up for me. So when I plot these points, this point is between 89 and 91, so that would be 90. And then that is month one. Oops, sorry, I did that backwards. Hold on. So we have months one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Because remember, they told us they do not care about months 10 through 11. So I went ahead and put those months in L1. And then month one is between 89 and 91, so that'd be 90. Month two is at 99. Month three, between 97 and 99, so 98. Month four, 99. Month five, 104, because it's between 103 and 105. Month six up here, between 107 and 109. Month eight at 109. Uh, sorry, that was month seven. Month eight in between, so 110, and month nine, 112. I'm going to click stat, calc, and then this one tells us, uh, if we look at all of our answer choices, these are all linear, so I'm going to do stat, calc, four. My starting is about 90.5, and so the only one that has that, uh, those numbers kind of close to it, is C. So 90.5, they started at 90. That's okay. We got 2.5333, and they said 2.5 because we're just going with which one best models the data. Next, we're going to look at problem 11. So I'm going to scroll a couple pages. So for number 11, the length of a rectangle is 54x9 y8 square yards. If the length is 6x3 y4 yards, which expression represents the width? So we've talked about this before, but it's been a while. Remember, if they give you area, you're going to need to divide. So I'm going to take the big number and put it on top and divide it by the little number. This is not on your formula chart, like the setup for it. The uh, exponents part is on your formula chart, but area equals length times width. So since we're trying to find width, we would divide both sides by length. So this is what we're really doing. So when I look at my big numbers, those go in the calculator. 54 divided by 6, just like I see it. Oops, sorry. And I get 9. I'm immediately going to mark out B and D because they don't have the correct big numbers. Then if I look at A and C, the only difference is the little numbers on the X's and the Y's. So I really just need to pick one exponent, whether it's the X's or the Y's, and solve those. Now these rules are on your formula chart. It tells you if you see division, you really need to subtract. So for the X's, 9 minus 3 is 6, which gets us to answer choice C. We're going to look at another exponents one, number 14, so just the next page over. This expression, x3, x negative 17, is equivalent to x to the n. What is the value of n? So when I look on my formula chart, I see that anytime I have the same basis, there's just enough room for addition. So to simplify this, I'm going to do 3 plus negative 17 and I get negative 14. Now remember, this is equal to x to the n. So what they're looking for here is the n value. So n would equal negative 14. And that's what you would put on your answer document or uh, for the Schoology quizzes, you would type those into Schoology as negative 14. n equals negative 14. 
Number 16, so just slide your eyes a little bit to the right. The graph models the linear relationship between the temperature of Earth's atmosphere and the altitude above sea level. Which of these best represents the rate of change of the temperature with respect to altitude? So remember, rate of change is a slope. So I'm going from like point to point. Now these points are not pretty, um, but when I'm looking at these, it's not quite 10, right? Because this one doesn't quite start at 10 and we don't quite get to zero. But I'm looking at something that's like, I don't know, let's say maybe eight. And then I scoot over one. So we're not quite up at 10 and we're not quite to zero. So I'm guessing eight and we scoot over one. So when I look at my answer choices, really small number, really small number, half of what I'm looking at. A is the only one that kind of makes sense with what I'm looking at. Now, again, with these, there's no, there's not really a point on this graph where it comes to a nice pretty point. Maybe you could say right here, but there's not really anywhere else. Uh, but you could try to find two pretty points and put them into the table and do stat edit, and you would get something kind of close to that. So we're going to flip two pages and look at number 20. Number 20 is this whole page. So a lifeguard earns $320 per week for working 40 hours plus $12 per hour worked over 40 hours. A lifeguard can work a max of 60 hours per week, which best represents the lifeguard's weekly earning in dollars for working H hours over 40. So one thing that's important is we are talking about hours over 40. So working for 40 hours, they told us at the beginning, she starts, I think it's a she, oh no, it doesn't say, sorry to assume. They start at $320 at 40 hours. They want to know which of these weekly earnings for over 40. So at 40 hours, you have $320. So that's your starting pay because you've already earned that. And then we're going to increase over 40. So over 40, they get $12 per hour for every hour over 40. Okay. Um, now, one thing that's important here, too, is they can only work a max of 60 hours. So that's why these all have endpoints. So if we start at 320, and you can get $12 an hour with a max of 60 hours total. That's an additional 20 hours. Remember, we're talking 40 hours over 40. Um, so at 40 hours, they have $320. They can only work a max of 60. So that's where that 20 hour difference comes into play. So on my calculator, that would be a grand total of $560. So if we look at my graphs, C and D are automatically out because they don't start um, with working over 40 hours at um, $320 as A and B do. And then I'm just looking for which of these has the correct ending number. And that's going to be answer choice B because that one's about 560. Answer choice A has it at about 480 maybe. So that one's kind of a lot of words, but all you're really doing is finding the graph that matches. Okay, and then for the last one, if you can scroll two more pages for me, we're going to look at number 24. It's another weird one. A set of weights includes a four pound barbell and six pairs of weight plates. Each pair of plates weighs 20 pounds. If X pairs of plates are added to the barbell, the total weight of the barbell and plates in pounds can be represented by f of x equals 20 plus 4, sorry, 20x plus 4. What is the range of the function for this situation? So remember, range is your y values. We know x's are plates, and we're talking about weights. So my range is going to be talking about the weight. So when I'm looking at the weight, they tell me you're starting with the four pound barbells. Okay, so that's what the plus four is. So if I have zero plates, I'm starting at four. Then if I have one plate, that would be 24. So I'm looking at my answer choices for something that has sets of these numbers. Now I'm not gonna work the whole thing out because let's look at our answers. 
A is not talking about weights, so there's no way it's going to be A. Same thing with C, not talking about weights. B has these numbers. D has some of these numbers, but it doesn't have all of them, right? And it doesn't say that you only have certain weights that you can use. It doesn't tell you, like, skip these things. So D doesn't really make sense for this problem. So B is going to be my correct answer. So using those tips, make sure you are finishing out the rest of your 18.3 assignment and showing your work and asking questions.